If you enjoy shooting the big bang guns, then the 30-06 is a real shoulder banger, but it's also a wallet buster to shoot. Commercial loads can run a dollar and a half or more each round, so if you're out target shooting, it can run up some serious coin quickly. Reloading the 30 on 6 can save you some bucks and can be an enjoyable evening away from TV and politics. I've been reloading six different calibers for many years. Now, if you're just starting out, you've got to factor in the cost of the press, dies, powder, measure scale, caliper, etc. But if you have all these items, why not reload one of the most expensive rounds, the 30 out 6 I did a quick cost assessment. Here's what it would cost to reload if you already had a press. You'll need the Lee 30 out 6 die set. I recommend the three die pace setter set. That's what we're using. Unless you want a neck sizer die, then you need the four die premium set. And you'll need a long charging die extension if you're using a Lee Auto Drum powder measure. Make sure the actuator drop tube is inside. We're using 308 full metal jacket 150 grain bullets at about 11 cents each. For powder, we're using IMR 4350 because we had some. An average load of 56 grains per round would cost 27 cents each. And large rifle primers will average 9 cents a piece. Those three items add up to 47 cents per round. But what about brass? Well, we lucked out. Uncle Frank gave us a couple hundred assorted cases. But you can purchase used brass online. And they are reusable. Okay, let's set up. I always buy a separate Lee four-hole turret for each caliber I reload because it's a cheap way to save a setup that's been properly calibrated to a specific load and I store these setups in the Lee Red Die Round Box. If this is your first time reloading with the Lee Turret Press, just follow their instructions or please see my complete setup video for reference. Lee Turret Press 357 Magnum. We're using IMR 4350 powder. The recommended amount for a 150 grain bullet is 54 to 58 grains. Because we're testing loads, we're going to do 54 and the mid-range 56. So we're setting up the Lee powder drum measure that can drop this large rifle load accurately. Remove the black plastic drum. Notice inside the drum how it works. The gears go to the full extent for a full drop. The slider on the shaft will cycle up and stop just short of the frame indicating a full drop. And back out the screw so it can hold a larger charge. To prep the drum to hold 54 grains, pre-measure 54 grains and pour it carefully into the drum hole. Then slowly screw until the powder reaches the top of the hole. This is a rough measure and gets you in the ballpark. Insert the empty drum and moderately tighten the screw so the drum can rotate without wobbling in the housing. Add powder to the hopper. and rotate it to on, that's counterclockwise. Insert a case and drop powder once. 54 grains is a lot of powder that will almost fill the case, so it needs to be emptied each time you check the drop. After two or three drops, check the powder drop on a scale. 
If it measures a little over 54, turn the screw very slightly in to reduce the amount in small increments. And try again until it measures 54 grains or so close such as 54.1. Well, you get the idea. Earlier, I checked the case lengths to make sure they don't exceed maximum length. Then I lubed the brass. You must use lube when using large rifle cases so they don't get stuck in the sizing die. Give it a light spray job and let the alcohol wick off. I use one unit of liquid lanolin to 10 units of ISO heat injector cleaner. They're all available at automotive stores, Walmart, or online. I do a last minute rub of the lube that's already on the case and run it through the sizing and priming die. I usually check the primer to make sure it's flat. Then on to the powder drop. I'm going to check the drop just to make sure it's on target. Then on to the bullet sizer die. Earlier, I adjusted the die by using a commercial round to set the seating of the bullet to specs. Our reload looks good, seated at the cantalure. And then onto the last die the crimper for a mild crimp. I set the die per Lee's instructions. Now let's check the round visually and check the length so it doesn't exceed the maximum. Looks good. We'll make 15 of these rounds and 15 of the 56 grain version for our test in the desert. If a case neck is mildly bent, the sizing die, which is the number one die, will reshape the neck to specs. Although I like the rotating drum powder drop for its broad range of dispensing various powders with accuracy, the only inconvenience is access to the clear powder canister. It doesn't allow easy access to dump more powder into it or to replace inaccurate powder drops while adjusting the amount of powder. This is especially an issue with large rifle powder drops that drain the canister rather quickly. I corrected this by drilling a hole dead center on the top of the canister and using an old leftover knob from a drawer to seal it when necessary. Now I can easily load from the top and replace the powder. Well, nothing is cheap these days, but it sure is nice to be able to shoot the big rounds without breaking the bank.